99.1 the sports animal welcome back to sports talk with john and vince i am vince ferrara excited about our next guest we're going to talk some major league baseball and why not bring in outstanding analysts for espn and mlb network xavier scruggs x joins us here on sports talk xavier vince ferrara here in knoxville how are you I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on here. Excited to talk some baseball with you. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate your insights. And uh, let's start with the Atlanta Braves. There's a lot of Braves fans here. They're all over the Southeast, as you're well aware. Second in the NL East and behind the Phillies, who you know are playing great baseball right now. No strider for the Braves the rest of the way. Uh, give me your assessment of where the Braves stand right now in that battle with the Phillies in the East. Yeah, it's it's not going to be as easy as the past few years, right? Um, I think the biggest thing is you you lose Strider, but um, the effects of that, you may not have really even felt that um, until you start getting toward the middle of the season, you know, the latter part of the season, because it's a long season. The good thing is guys have been able to step up. I look at Ronaldo Lopez, right? Um, Chris Sale has done a very nice job after coming over from Boston, um, you just want to make sure you have consistency in that rotation and the depth is going to be tested as well. Cause we know guys go down with injuries and, and things happen throughout the course of a year. So, um, it's good to see that they've done a decent job, especially without, you know, Ronald Acuna jr. Hasn't got going to the power standpoint in which we've seen in the past. Um, you know, we, we still expect more out of Matt Olson and the same thing goes for Austin Riley. So to see where they're at right now. Um, tells you a lot of a, a lot about how deep they are as an offense and how well a lot of those guys have started from a starting pitching standpoint. Xavier Scruggs, analyst for ESPN and MLB Network, joining us here on Sports Talk with John and Vince. I'm Vince Ferrara. A lot of Cubs fans as well. We air the AA affiliate Tennessee Smokies games here on 99.1, the sports animal in Knoxville. Their Cubs are battling the Brewers there in the NL Central. Give me your breakdown of the Cubbies so far in 2024. I mean, it, I, I first I have to look at, you know, one of the best acquisitions of the offseason that may be going under the radar is Shota Imanaga, right? Like this was a guy that comes over from Japan and he's been dominant uh, with not extreme dominant stuff as far as velocity, but he's making major league hitters look silly. And I think having him at the top of that rotation along with Justin Steele, who's back now, um, that that's a great one, two punch. I, I look at also from a young standpoint, another acquisition that they made coming over from the Dodgers, Michael Bush, he started off the season extremely hot, especially from a power standpoint. The one thing you look for as remember this Cubs team was one game away from the playoffs last year. The one thing you look for is to continue to create depth and you want your acquisitions to get going early. And that's what they've done so far. Bellinger's back in this lineup now too. So you can expect some more offensive production, but you want to see guys step up because as long as the season is, it, you're going to count on more than 25 guys. And I think that's been one of the cool things about watching this Cubs team who maybe people didn't have as a favorite in the NL Central. There are five former University of Tennessee players in Major League Baseball on rosters right now. A couple of them made their debut this year. Trey Lipscomb for the Nationals, third baseman earlier this year. Jordan Beck most recently called up by the Rockies as he went through that system pretty quickly. Uh, of course, Nick Senzel, former first-round pick of the Reds now with the Nationals. Garrett Crochet uh, obviously had his moments another first-round draft pick from the University of Tennessee. And then, of course, veteran Jan Gomes, who's uh, certainly been around the block and has been successful. It, just you take a pick on on any of those guys that you might have a thought or two on. Yeah, I mean, Garrett Crochet jumps off the, the page, right? Mm -hmm. Just because of the electric stuff. Um, it, it's good seeing him now being able to come back into this rotation and he looks good. He's going to have his ups and downs, right? But I like that you starting to see what can become of somebody that can be dominant with, with really two, two, maybe three plus pitches that he has as well. So I'm, I'm excited to see how he continues to develop. Um, you know, and the same thing goes for Nick Zenzel. I like the idea that this is a guy that's ha had some battles himself, right? Now he finds himself back with an opportunity with the Nats. And I actually just spoke to him a few days ago on, on my show on MLB network off base, 
um, there's a different mentality with him in this Nationals team and the opportunity there, and he's been producing. So it's it's always good to see guys that go through some ups and downs and maybe go to a different team and find an opportunity to to really contribute. Yeah, with as good as the University of Tennessee is right now, there's a lot of guys that will kind of moving through the system pretty quick that uh, you'll get to see in Major League Baseball. So that number, I'm sure, will will go up pretty quickly. Xavier Scruggs, analyst for ESPN and MLB Network, joining us talking some Major League Baseball here for a few minutes with us. My co-host, John Wilkerson, is a big Red Sox fan. He's a longtime voice of Tennessee baseball. He and I call University of Tennessee baseball games and wondering if you can give him a, a, a quick uh, thought or two on the Boston Red Sox and what you see from them this year in the AL East. Yeah, I mean, another one of those teams that's battled a, a lot of injuries early on, but still from a starting pitching standpoint, and you got to give your hats off to the new pitching coach, Bailey, who's done an amazing job with this staff. Um, he's figured out how to get the most out of them. And I think it's still a team that's still trying to find their identity, but I think you can look to some real bright spots on this on this roster. When I look at Willier Abreu, I mean, he's meant to be a star, right? 24 years old and a guy that understands the strike zone better than a lot of veterans. Uh, Tyler O'Neill has come over and brought some thump in the middle of this order. Uh, Raphael Devers always doing what he does, one of the best hitters in all of Major League Baseball. But I think... Now seeing Von Grissom come back um, after his injury, and 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 you know he's an important piece coming back from that Chris Sale trade. That there's pieces there that give them an opportunity to look at. You know the AL East will be tough, but I think they'll still be able to compete as long as they stay healthy from a pitching standpoint. And that's not and that's easier said than done. But I love what I've seen when I when I talk about pitching. I love what I've seen from Cooper Criswell. I mean, you talk about somebody that's really come into this rotation on a one-year deal and taking the most of his opportunity that there's guys on this roster that are setting the tone as far as an expectation and I think guys will continue to feed off of that love it Xavier Scruggs from ESPN and MLB Network joining us for a couple more minutes talking some MLB I, I was born and raised in Tampa that's where you live so I've seen you kind of comment on those new city connect jerseys and how all the Rays have played in those give me your thoughts on outside of that on this Rays team kind of hovering around 500 yeah well first of all the city connect jerseys are the best ones i've seen <laughs> um and, and 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 that's not just me because i live in tampa i actually went to the stadium and i and i went and saw the jerseys in person and i didn't i wasn't keen on spending 300 dollars to buy me a, a, and myself a jersey my kids a jersey my wife a jersey but with the way that it jumped and it hit me in the face as far as how cool it was i was like i gotta do it and so we ended up getting the jerseys put the kids names on them so they nice. loved it um but it, when i look at this team it's it's different than last year's, right? Last yeah. year, remember it jumped. They they got off to such a hot start from a power standpoint. And we were like, "Whoa, where where'd all this power come from?" Because the Rays don't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, that that hasn't necessarily been the case. But over the past week, and I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the City Connects. They've done a better job from a hitting standpoint. Um, of putting together some better at bats, Randy Rosarena seems to be heating up a little bit more than, than uh, as cold as he was in the beginning of this season. Isak Paredes is a guy that goes very underrated, but knows how to pull the ball out of the stadium with the best of them. Um, they just got Josh Lowe back as well, so I think pieces coming back here and there. The same thing with um, Taj Bradley; he, he's back in this rotation too. I, just like we talk about a bunch of these other teams, the health is going to be big for them. Um, and and them trying to get back to an offense that was really dominant last year. If they can get back towards that, then they can play in that AL East. But when you look at the Orioles and the Yankees, from 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 the Rays' point of view, those teams are so far ahead right now from a pitching and an, an offensive standpoint. You said the word dominant. Paul Skeens is making his debut on Saturday against the Cubs. Uh, just less than a year ago, we saw him dominate college baseball, saw it firsthand. Now he's getting the call up and zooming through the system. Tell me at what kind of excitement there is in Major League Baseball circles for Paul Skeens' debut. 
Yeah, this is this is the the most exciting, most anticipated debut of a starting pitcher since Steven Strasburg. And and we wow. remember Steven Strasburg went straight from San Diego State straight to to the league. Um, and, and so you just think about from a stuff uh perspective, he's got some of the best stuff that that we'll ever see touch the major league level from a velocity standpoint, from a slider, from a slider, the um the nasty the nasty splinker that he's got now. He's got a mix between a split and a and a sinker. And I think that's what kind of interests me most is because he went it to the minor leagues, knew he had to develop and really harness in on a third pitch. And he's done that so far because you think about it at LSU, he's only got to really use the fastball that's going to overpower most people in the slider. But he knows pro ball, major league hitters, you got to develop a third pitch. He's done that now. He's dominated the triple A level. Um, and he's the future of the Pirates. Like they're building a strong rotation there. And I think when you look at this team trying to make some noise in the central and hope, hope and, and be a hopeful playoff team. Him, Jaron Jones, Mitch Keller, like those guys are are the future of this of this rotation. Give Xavier Scruggs a follow on Twitter or slash X uh, at his name, uh, and then also you can check him out on Apple Plus, Diamondbacks, Orioles, Royals, Angels, those upcoming assignments, and of course on MLB Network as well. Xavier, really a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Hopefully, we can do it again uh, a little bit later in the season. We appreciate you. No, thanks so much for having me. Let's do it again soon. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. That is Xavier Scruggs from ESPN and MLB Network. I'm Vince Ferrara. This is Sports Talk 99.1, the Sports Channel.